Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, I'll talk primarily on uh, a, a join just below what Dr. Uh, part, uh, Dr. Wadir was speaking on. And this will be only on diagnosis and treatment planning. The actual treatment will be spoken to by the following speakers. My name is Rohan. Uh, when you start your private practice, I think every week you'll see one patient with a sprained finger. The patient will come to you with some sort of an injury, commonly would be a cricket ball injury. He'll say, uh, finger mod gaya hai, sooj gaya hai. And everybody thinks, including you, the patient, the family physician, that is just a common sprain. Okay? But a common sprain can be actually just a ligament sprain, then you are quite saved. Or it could be some sort of an avulsion like this. You'll be quite surprised that even a simple dislocation can present and will be missed if not uh, examined well. A fracture dislocation, this would be the commonest presentation if you have, if you examine the patient and do an x-ray, or it could be a bad injury like this. So any one of these five things will present like a, just a sprain or just a swelling. Imagine it's very disabling because the patient is unable to bend the PIP joint. And if you miss treating it, then the patient has a significant disability. Why do we miss it? Because the patient ignores just a finger. The family doctor will ignore it. And when it comes to us, we may end up taking the wrong x-rays. Okay? And we'll talk about it. So we avoid it by actually informing the patient that try and bend and see you're unable to bend. The same information you can talk to your family doctors, that if the patient is unable to bend completely, get an x-ray done, don't delay and as a surgeon, we should get proper x-rays. So you will have, occasionally you will have these weird deformities. It could be in the coronal plane or in the sagittal plane. These are obvious deformities. Everybody will go in for an x-ray. Check for an active range of motion. This is for me the, the key to investigate a PIP joint. Any swelling, if the patient is just unable to bend, 0 to 70 is more than enough. But if the patient is just able to bend 0 to 20, you get an x-ray done. Most of the times, x-rays are sufficient. Okay, I've rarely taken a CT or an MRI for this, this joint, the proximal interpharyngeal joint. The commonest mistake would be taking the x-rays of the hand. So you can see the injury is to the ring finger, looks almost normal, and could be treated just with buddy taping or splinting. But if you take a lateral x-ray, you can see there is a significant subluxation and a really large volar fragment that was missed and this has healed in this position. So the key x-ray for a proximal interphalangeal joint would be a lateral x-ray of the finger and not a lateral x-ray of the hand. Again, a simple, an AP view, probably this was missed. So, but if you take a lateral x-ray, this is the kind of fracture. And you can see it's almost dislocated, involving a major, major part of the articular surface. And this definitely needs some intervention. Occasionally, you can miss only on a lateral x-ray. So if you see the lateral x-ray on the right side, it looks OK. But the subluxation is actually seen on the AP and oblique. So the for completion, take an x-ray of the finger, AP, oblique, and lateral, and not of the hand. On an x-ray, if you really can't find anything, you can take a comparative view of the other finger, uh, middle finger or the ring finger, and, and compare them. Or you can see for this V sign. The V sign is actually formed on the dorsal aspect, and if it's there, something is wrong with the joint, and it needs to be addressed. In coming to treatment planning, for me, there are four things that matter. What is the duration at which the patient presents to me? What is the type of injury? There were the five types that, that I showed earlier. Whether the joint is stable, after you reduce it or without reduction, it's stable. And what is the fragment size if there is a fracture dislocation? The aim for all your treatment, whatever you do, everybody will talk about it uh, in the following lectures. It should be a congruent joint. There should not be a V sign. It should be a stable fixation so that you can start moving the joint early. Early and late presentation. Usually we will see this at about five days to seven days. Very rarely I would see it on day one. Uh, it decides whether you're able to do a close reduction or an open reduction. All right. So that's why I don't miss these injuries. The, the x-ray on the left is a fairly new injury. It's, it was on the fourth day. So something can be done without doing any reconstruction or salvage procedure. While the ring finger was presented at about six weeks or two months. So we have missed the bus for doing something simple. 
the decision to salvage it or fix it or reconstruct it depends on when the patient presents to you. Obviously, when you see an injury like this, an open injury, it needs early intervention. Don't delay it. It's like any other open fracture or open fracture dislocation of the joint. It's the closed injury that usually ends up being mistreated or untreated. Dislocation. So if you have a simple dislocation, you are able to reduce it. The treatment plan will depend upon after reduction, whether the joint is stable or unstable. When I mean stable, it means the patient after reduction is able to completely bend completely extend without dislocating or subluxating the joint or when you have the finger in extension and flexion you are going to check for mediolateral instability or varus valgus instability. If the, patient, the joint is stable both in flexion extension and in mediolateral instability usually you may not need to do much except protect it. However, it's an unstable joint then you may end up needing to do some intervention. The commonest fracture that we see is a fracture dislocation, sorry. The commonest injury in a PIP joint that we see is a fracture dislocation. And like Dr. Warrior said, 10%, 20%, 30%, it really doesn't matter. What matters though is whether the joint is stable after you reduce it. However, there have been criteria and they have shown that if it's more than 50%, you really need to do something more major. So you can divide the base of the middle phalanx into three quarters or four quarters, it de depending what you want. You can have a small fragment like this. Probably this is a fairly stable joint. You have something like this, which is about 10 to 20%. You have something like this, which is about 30 to 40%. And this by far probably is one of the difficult injuries to manage because it's almost more than 50%. So in summary, when you are seeing a PIP joint injury, don't miss it. Always examine a sprained finger. Don't delay taking proper x-rays because it's e easier to get better results by doing some sort of a fixation or reconstruction rather than salvaging the joint. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.